Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for another episode of Scrap Mechanic. In today's episode we're gonna build something like a minigame or like a proof of concept of a multiple piston slash crane arm functionality, fine adjustments, uh, a lot of bearings etc. However, thankfully this is not real life, not everything has to be useful, well not even in real life everything has to be useful. However, what we have here is a little labyrinth uh, through which we have to lead this block. I have a bunch of buttons right here that are determining the horizontal directions and these are responsible for the vertical direction. So what I want to do first is move this two blocks up. So I'm gonna use two of these blocks, then I'm gonna move one, two, three blocks over, then I move two blocks down again, then I want to move all the way to the right and all the way up except one, there we go, then one over, one up then two over, one down, two over and one up again. There we go, we have moved through the entire labyrinth. It's totally useless, but the proof of concept of course can be used for anything else. So this is the thing that we are gonna build today. It is of course using the same mechanics as the calculator and the password lock design. However, I just love what you can do with these things and how precise you can be. So without any further ado, let's get this started. I want to start with the actual piston and we want to do this fairly low on the ground so we can have the labyrinth even lower on the ground. So I would say we are gonna move just one block up right here maybe and then we want to have one block facing us with a bearing, another block going up, one facing us with a bearing, another block going down and then we need to place one here at the bottom. Can we achieve that? Yeah, look at that. We can even do something like that. At the last bearing then again we need a block going into this direction and into this one. Then obviously we need to hook this up to a bunch of controllers. So let's have our first controller right here, hooking up the first and the second and then the third bearing. We want to make sure that they are all pointing forwards, so into this direction, into this direction we're gonna build the piston. In order to move this exactly one block we need to go 30, minus 60 and 30 degrees again. Somewhat like this and let's just install a test button. We're gonna have like five buttons next to each other because we want to have like a 5x5 five five piston design. So let's move this first block and yes indeed they are already going the right way. So if we look at this, right now we are at this spot and if we move this then it is going exactly one block with these measurements. So now the only thing we have to do is rinse and repeat this five times or four more times. So we want our first bearing here, then we want to go up, face us, bearing, go down and then we need to place this guy, another bearing, go up, no. Actually at this point we want to move again further to the next one. We want to attach all the controllers that we need already. So that's two, three, four and five. The second one we're gonna hook as well and add the same settings, making sure that these are pointing into the forwards direction. So that's 30 minus 60 and 30. So let me quickly rinse and repeat that for the last three guys. And once that's done, I'll be right back. Okay, there we go. Now we have the same thing five times and you can see that I can move it one block at a time, you know, depending on how many of these switches I have on. Of course, you could hook this up to a more intelligent activation system, for instance, just one button and per click you are activating something. I don't know how it would work, but with the sensors and everything you could definitely do something about that. Okay, now we want to make the upwards direction. So if we have a look at this piston, now we kind of have to think a little bit differently. The bearings are gonna still face, you know, in the same direction, but we have to build the piston into the horizontal or upwards direction. So yeah, actually not horizontal. So if you can see, we have built the modules right here, adjacent to each other. Now we have to build them on top of each other. 
starting with the first bearing right here. So maybe we can even do this a little bit closer. We want to have everything as compact as possible. So we could potentially just move one block right here and then start with our first bearing if we move this right here. That should be good. And now we want to move towards the back and towards this side. There would be the second bearing we want to move up again. Well, in this case it is up, but once we actually add all of the controllers, it will not be up, it will be to the left. So let's maybe do that to not get confused. Two, three, four, five. Beautiful. We want to hook this up right there and... Oh no, what did I do? Not to the button, to the bearing. Okay, the bearings are facing the wrong way. Of course it should move into this direction and then also this one. And then last but not least we need to add one more right here that is also moving into this direction. Okay and now we can actually, let's see, can we already go up? I think we can do that. And right here we would start with the next piston. Hmm, let's actually see this working. I'm not sure if I've done the right thing here. We want to hook up all of these buttons and we want to set the first thing to 30 minus 60, 30 as per usual. Okay, activate this bad boy. Yes, indeed. Okay, this is working. Now I have the ability to move one over and one up, for instance. Cool. So now let's also add the second one right here. We want to move right there, add the bearing. Take a curve, take another curve, add the bearing, take a curve, another curve, add the bearing, and then we want to move up. Okay, this should be the second thing to hook up. And this time, yeah, this time they are actually facing into the right direction. So we can always alternate by switching the directions and not switching them. Okay, but still, it's better to test it. Oh, actually, something went wrong here. Ah, I did minus 30. It should be minus 60, of course. Man, check your settings. There we go. Okay, now let me also rinse and repeat that for this version. We just need three more that go towards the top. And then I think we have something really compact together here. I mean, I didn't waste any space at all, I would say. I'll be right back. Okay, there we go. I think I got it. Let's try to expand it all the way just to see that everything is working properly. So five blocks to the right and then five blocks up. Cool. Now, of course, anything that we attach to the front right here or to the top. Let's actually bring this all the way down because I'm too small. There we go. So we can theoretically expand this as far as we please. Maybe take a little curve so that we don't see as much of the ugliness. And maybe go even further. Do something like this and go even further. And here is where we could build, for instance, whatever the heck we want. In our case, we're gonna build a little labyrinth. There we go. So the lowest we can currently go is this. Let's see if I expand it all the way towards the left side where we have to start with the labyrinth. That would be right here. We kind of want to support this a little bit and then we can even add a squarish block as long as it's on the outside and the pipe is necessary so it can go through the blocks a little bit easier through the entire labyrinth. So let's see, this is currently the lowest setting. So it is on the lower left corner of the labyrinth. We can move one, two, three, four, five blocks up. And then we also want the frame of the labyrinth. We can also move one, two, three, four, five blocks to the right. And then this is going to be the edge. Okay, let's try to make this look a little bit better by using appropriate blocks. I kind of want to frame this in here with my blocks. I mean, a mini game should also always be appealing, right? So now we are going to actually make the labyrinth. So we're going to start maybe right here. Then we might want to move up yeah at this point so let's see if we can do that mm, that's not space efficient so we're actually gonna do one less and we already move up here okay then we move to the right somewhat like this and we want to move all the way up let's see something like that uh, i need a block down below so i need to do some trickery then we want to move one over here so it's not really a labyrinth, there's just one way, but eh, you get the basic gist. It's like the game where you are not allowed to touch the edges. Okay. 
okay and we do this so this would be like the end of the thing and here we have to start yeah so my first version actually looked much more like a labyrinth but it is still you know kind of only one way <laughs> okay now basically the only thing we have to do is make this look a little bit nicer now one problem with this is of course that we cannot really make the background disappear because it's gonna get in the way of the pipe right Hmm, but what we could do is make something right here that is large enough. So maybe let's actually get rid of this block just very briefly and we are gonna attach something else here. We're going to need one of these pipes and we want this to be facing down, something like that. Okay, then we're gonna attach a few normal blocks and after that comes this decorative block. There we go, okay, now I have the possibility to maybe make the back wall right here using the entire contraption. I mean, oh no, this is too heavy, right? Let's go with a light material, maybe we can make the background out of wood. But it shouldn't have too much texture to be honest. Yeah, let's just see what that does for us. We just need to remove a little something from here and now we can move one, two, three, four, five, six even. That is great. Okay, with that we should be able to cover up the entire thing. We also need a little bit of space into this direction. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, that seems about right. And then, of course, we also need to go towards the top, right? So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, we just basically need to cover it up. Well, let's try to accomplish that. Come on, do me the favor and close this off. Now, I'm not sure if the piston is going to be strong enough for this. But at least, you know, we, we have it kind of covered up right now. Okay, let's try to press a few buttons. We're going to go to the right. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't think it is strong enough. Or maybe it doesn't have enough space here. Okay, now you're loose. Let's try this again. Again. Okay, well, we... No, we just move like half a block. Okay, I'm gonna remove maybe the bottom here. Let's see what happens. Uh, I don't think this is working out, even though right now we are... Ah, maybe it does work out. Moving up. No, look at that. I can move up two blocks and it can barely keep it stable at one block. Okay, guys, I'm not really sure if it's working out. The only thing I know is that I want to set up a buttons panel right here, just so that we can have a better look at stuff. So there's going to be the direction towards the right. That's one, two, three, four. Mm, where do we start? Five. Are we in the center? No. Okay, so now I probably want the piston to be fully retracted, right? So we want to move towards the left. And then we want to move one down and one to the left and then two more down, two more to the right, then two more down and two to the left. There we go. Now we can remove all of these freaking buttons and hook up the correct ones instead. So we would want the upper row to correspond with these controllers right here and of course the lower row with the other ones. Let me quickly do that. And... no! <laughs> there we go. Okay, ah, finally. Okay, now we should be able to maneuver it, but the background really looks shabby. We cannot do that. Let me actually get rid of that entirely. We cannot use you. Yeah, you just fall down there. Okay, but now we can do it properly by going to the right two blocks. Yes, okay, so this is what I wanted to see. The Labyrinth minigame is kind of working. Now we would maybe want to install a fail mechanism. So in case I'm moving uh, to the right and now down, then maybe something should happen. But how to check that, I have no idea. <laughs> Maybe you guys can come up with something. But other than that, guys, I would say this has been it. Oops, that was a little bit embarrassing. For today's episode, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to leave down your likes and suggestions as usual. Have a great time and hopefully I'm going to catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.